Good day to all who have gathered to honor a great Virgin Islander, David Hamilton Jackson. Of course, thanking our governor for allowing us to have this time to be here. As always, a special thank you to Raymond Williams and the Grove Place Action Committee for organizing this event year after year, never forgetting the achievements of our people. As an adult, my mother told me that she remembered as a little girl a great man who came over for Sunday dinner at her family's home on Company Street in Christiansted. My great-grandmother, Araminta Jackson, was the aunt of D. Hamilton Jackson. My mother recalls him as a strong man whose presence was grand and imposing. Considered by the Danish government to be one of the most dangerous people of his time, D. Hamilton Jackson was relentless in his pursuit for the advancement of the Virgin Islands and its people. He was known as the voice of the oppressed with his tireless work to establish the first free newspaper in the Danish West Indies, The Herald, as well as his monumental work in not only organizing the first labor union on St. Croix in 1915, but also successfully mobilizing the over 6,000 members of the union to strike in order to secure better wages. As we pause on this Liberty Day, to honor D. Hamilton Jackson and his legacy and his work, I think of the ways that we all can be spurred on to make excellent contributions to our territory. During his time, D. Hamilton Jackson knew that for Virgin Islanders to advance economically, politically, and socially, that taking a strong activist stance against the injustices and the systems constructed to oppress and hold down his people Poverty, poor wages, lack of opportunity, substandard living, a system of serfdom imposed on the residents of the Danish West Indies was something that must be stopped. Similarly, in my role as Congresswoman of our Virgin Islands, I recognize the importance of the fight not just to create an economic system and financial and regulatory tools that support us, but opportunities to move us beyond our present circumstance to more equitable treatment in the law and practice for our territory. I and my team continue to advocate and engage and call into question when necessary legislation, practices, and even past legislation in order to secure a better and brighter future, not just for us, but for generations to come. I think of D. Hamilton Jackson's resolve and his courage in going before the Danish crown to petition for the repeal of the law that prohibited independent newspapers in the Danish West Indies at the time. There was great risk involved, yet he pursued and successfully accomplished his goal. He and others like him, Denmark Vesey, General Butto, Queens Mary, Axeline, Bottom Belly, Kaziah, Edward Wilmot Blyden, Hubert Harrison. These are the individuals whose shoulders we Virgin Islanders stand on. The examples that I think of when I go before my colleagues on the floor of Congress or behind closed doors to fight for items like better Medicaid coverage, direly needed disaster funding from FEMA to repair our schools, hospitals, and infrastructure, SSI, the expansion of child tax credit and earned income tax credit, the forgiveness of our community disaster loans, our voting rights, and our equitable inclusion in every piece of transformational legislation that is coming out of Washington, D.C. during this time. It's my hope that we all will be encouraged, our spirits renewed to keep fighting our fight, making a difference where we are, as we revere this day and the freedoms we enjoy as Virgin Islanders because of the sacrifices of men and women, men like my relative D. Hamilton Jackson. Let us not shame their memory. Let us advance the work started by him, the Black Moses. On this day, the anniversary of the first publication of the Herald, 
Happy Liberty Day.